Welcome to Politipeeps. My name is Edward Hofer, and we are talking with Larry Sharp today. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? Hey, doing well. Thanks for having me. Okay, so we're working on a book together. It's called On Happiness. And one of the most important parts of building your happiness is your personal happiness. Can you talk for a few minutes about what personal happiness is, how you get it, and how you keep it from slipping away? Look, it's, it's not easy at all, right? Happiness is a goal that many of us are trying to achieve, and some of us don't even know how to get there. We sometimes think that someone else will grant us happiness. This is one of our biggest issues, right? Thinking that if I meet the right person or have the right friend or have the right job or have the right relationship, all of a sudden I'll get happiness. A common thing is, you know, once this thing happens, then I'll be happy, right? Once I raise X dollars, once I get married, once I have a child, once I get promoted, once you know this person wins an election, once this thing happens, then I'll be happy. And the reality of it is that thing, while it may be valuable to you, is probably not going to make you happy. Happiness is basically about three concepts, right? Do I feel like I'm loved? Do I feel like I'm respected? And do I have purpose? If those three things are true, we tend to be happy. How do we do that? By searching for those things, by finding environments where we are, those things. If you're having personal relationships, right, there's a good general rule on happiness. It's, it's a very general rule. How does someone become happy? You have better relationships. Good, positive relationships overall in your life will tend to make you happier. Positive, of course, is also relative, so there isn't a, a clear formula. But here's the answer. When I'm with my people in my family life, is it positive? Are the interactions positive? Now, note, I said positive. I didn't say perfect. There are going to be problems with your family and your friends and your job because we're human and there is no perfection. But do I know, is it obvious that the interactions I have with my family are obviously more positive than negative? Is it, you know, like a three to one ratio? Is that obvious that with my family, you know, out of three times I see my mom or my dad or my sister or my brother or my cousins, that three times compared to one, it's positive. I feel good about it. It's okay. If not, you have to repair that relationship or you have to leave that relationship. And the problem is people often say, but Larry, I can't leave. I'm trapped. Here, and be here becomes the other issue. People often believe we're trapped. I want to be clear about something. Unless you're physically locked in a cage, you are never trapped. These are simply stories we tell ourselves to validate either bad behavior or to validate our fear. It's not true. You are never trapped. There is nothing stopping you from walking away from your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, mother, father, sister, brother, whoever that person's job. There's nothing, wrong. There's nothing stopping you. And you can make an actual choice and say to yourself, you know what, I don't want to leave my mom or my dad or someone you might never think you want to leave because I love them and their relationship is valuable. That's fine. If that's true, that is a choice you've made. If you've made that choice, you're not trapped. But Larry, I'm still with my mom or my dad who bothers me or who drives me crazy or who's mean to me. Yeah, but you've chosen that, which means you now have power. You are not trapped. If you choose to put yourself in a negative situation because you want to repair it and you recognize that you've put yourself into that negative situation because you want to fix it, repair it, or get through it, you will actually feel better about that situation because you're not trapped. It's a choice you've made. You might say, Larry, you're talking trash. No, I walked away from my mom. I did. I walked away from my mom. My mom, many people know, was an addict. And if you've had an addict in your life, you know that one is between you and the drug the drug wins. That's how that works. I knew that and I walked away. So my mom hit rock bottom and then I came back. Was that a negative situation? Of course. People say, well, you had to help your mom. No, I didn't. I chose to help my mom. Lots of people who have addicts in their life don't help. And the addict falls and fails and collapses and winds up dead or in prison. That happens often. Lots of people give up on addicts. Happens all the time. I could have. That was my choice. I walked away until she was ready for help, and then I came back to her. A choice I made. Was I trapped? No, I made a choice. If you see it that way, whatever relationship you're in, you will find that you will feel better about those relationships. You have a better chance of being happy, a better chance of not being depressed or sad because you had control. Control is a critical aspect. Your job is the same. Your job's the same. 
If you're in a job, that's bad. People tell me all the time, I can't leave my job. I got a pension. I hear that all the time. I live in New York. New York is a very uh, is the most unionized state in the nation, and a lot of people have pensions. True. I can't leave my job. I hate it, but I got a pension. Yes, you can. You're choosing to keep your pension because it makes financial sense for you and or your family. That is a choice you're making. You're not trapped. You can quit. Nothing's stopping you from saying, I'm done with this pension job. Take the pension and shove it. I'm moving to Florida. You can do that if you want to. You're choosing not to. I'm asking you to look at the, the negative aspects in your life. Think about them. And if you make a decision, you're not trapped. You have the ability to walk away if you want to. Family, friend, job, relationship. You can get divorced if you want to if you're married. You can abandon your kids. Please don't abandon your kids. But you can abandon your kids if you want to. Please don't. But you could. That, there's nothing physically stopping you from doing that. You can pack up and go to Mexico if you want to. You're choosing to stay with your kids. You're choosing to stay with your spouse or girlfriend or husband or whatever the case may be. It's a choice you're making. If you see it that way, it will make things better. You can gain more control and you can fix them. Better relationships will mean a better life. You'll be closer to happiness. The question, how can you be happy, is a loaded question. Because you can never be fully happy, but can you have happiness? Of course you can. Life is a series of joy and pain. You will achieve happiness and you will lose happiness. You have to find it again and you'll, and you'll keep going for it. Part of the joy of happiness is trying to achieve the happiness. Right, that's part of the goal, is looking for that happiness and achieving it. That's part of the goal, going to achieve that happiness. You will find it. So I hope that was kind of clear. Look for your relationships. Understand um, your relationships. Try to have control of them and fix and make them better. The better you have it, the better off you'll be. Absolutely, yeah. That uh, is certainly a big part of being happy, keeping in control of everything. So what other elements are there in personal happiness other than just being in control? Once you have control over your life, what do you do with it then? Yes, assuming that you're trying to look at your relationships and, and have control, the goal is now thinking, how do I make them better, right? How do, I make, how do I make the interactions more positive, right? And that can be challenging, particularly when there are many people in your, rela in your relationships, right? You might have, some of you have small families where it's one or two people. Some have 15, 16, 20, 100 people in your family, right? The more people you have in your world, all of a sudden you find that it becomes harder for you to maintain that happiness. The number one thing is you want to make sure that when you're with somebody in your life, this professional, personal, whatever the case may be, that when you're there, you're as positive as you can be with them. You are as empathetic as you can be with them. You can be with them as best you can. And I'll go both in two ways. I'll go professional and personal. When it comes to personal, when you're out with your cousin, sister, brother, mother, father, something small as putting your phone away. Well, then you may say, Larry, how does putting your phone away make people happier? I'm telling you, I have a thing I do all the time. When I get in front of people, it's very common. I will take my phone, I will turn it upside down, and I will put it on the table. I'll put it on the table, upside down, on the table, face down. This is symbolic, right? It says, right now I'm with you. That's what matters, I'm with you. The phone doesn't matter right now. I hope they will copy, and many times they do. Many times they take it and they go, ah, and they do it too, and why does that matter? What I've just told the person is, I'm here with you right now. What does that make the person feel? Important, respected, loved, valued. And when they feel that, they tend to give it back to you. Some people don't, it's not 100%, this is not perfect, but most will. And when that happens, they're like, oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. This guy's a good guy, He'll, I'll treat him better. What I found often is people were very amazed on how I remembered people's stories in the campaign. When I campaigned last year, I literally met thousands of people, literally thousands of people. And I remember often their stories. I often did forget their names, and I felt bad about that. I couldn't remember always their names but I almost always remember their story. I remember if they were married, if they got in jail, if, if they had a problem with their farm. I often remember their stories when I saw them again. And they were surprised I remember the story. And the reason is when I talk to them, I'm with them. When I'm with them, I'm with them. 
and they got it and they connected. And I remembered, I didn't remember their name always, but I remember the story behind them constantly because I asked about the story, I wanted to hear it, and I commented on the story and I remembered the story because I'm with them. Personal, professional, keep distractions away. When you're with somebody, be with somebody. That's the critical piece. You do that, you'll have better relations. Now, most important piece, when you're with them, empathy is everything. Not sympathy, empathy. Sympathy means I'm feeling sorry for someone. If someone has a loss, feel sorry for them. I get it. No worries. But empathy is understanding where they're coming from. Whether you agree with it or not, whether you feel sorry for them or not, whether you feel bad about it or not, whether you're mad at them or not, doesn't matter, but understanding where they're coming from. If you understand where someone comes from, empathy, you have a better chance of communicating with them and then turning whatever interaction you have with them into a positive interaction. And there's the key. Happiness in relationships is all about interaction after interaction after interaction. If you try and you focus in the habit, and this is habit forming and habit, and habit breaking. If you're in the habit of being in the moment, if you have a habit of having empathy, if you have a habit of caring about the other and connecting and trying to connect and to making this interaction the only interaction in the world right now, if you have a habit of doing that, sometimes it will fail. But most of the time, it will, it will work. And when it works, you'll have better interactions and you'll have better relationships in general. That's the key. Good habits. And you might say, but Larry, I don't have to have this for some knucklehead or for some crazy guy or for someone I hate. You don't. It's true. But if you begin to judge, that guy's a jerk, she's lazy, he's an idiot, she's a moron, whatever, and you start doing that, oh, he's valuable, oh, she's special, you start doing that, you're prejudging everybody and you're going to fail. Treat everybody like they're valuable, and guess what? The people who you don't know are valuable and are valuable will all of a sudden like you, and average people will like you no matter what. Treat people as positively as you can, even when they're negative towards you. And that's the most important piece. Remember something. When someone's a jerk against you and you're not a jerk against them, it's usually them, not you. And that's the hard part to understand because when someone's mean to you or nasty or disrespectful to you, it is natural for us to take it personally. Natural. I'm asking you to realize you don't have to. It's usually them, not you. Most of the time when people are angry, they're just angry. You're just in the way. So you take their anger because you happen to be there. But anybody who would have been there would have received their anger. And to understand that, you'll feel better. Now, I know I kind of went all over the place there. But dealing with this is, is, is habit forming. It's, it's actually life changing for you, right? As an individual, the change the way you look at things, change the way you look at interactions, change the way you look at each individual. And you'll see I often try to do that to the best of my ability. I'm not perfect either. I preach this stuff and I'm still practicing this stuff. I preach this stuff and I still fail. I preach this stuff because I believe in it. I try my best to do it, but I still screw up. I still say things I shouldn't say. I still get angry when I shouldn't get angry. I still have to apologize when I screw up. I still do that and so will you. Happiness is something we're always trying to achieve like perfection. Trying to achieve perfection, you won't get it, but you will get excellence. Trying to always have happiness, every once in a while you'll have happiness but often you'll lose it and you'll be struggling for it again. So um, form good habits, focus on your personal relationships, be in the moment and take your power back because yes. you're never really trapped. Unless somebody has you in a cage, you're never really trapped. That's true. You never really trapped. It's really how you look at it. That's fantastic, Larry. How can people reach you? Hey, sharpway.com. You can see in the background, sharpway.com, the sharp with Larry Sharp Facebook page, Sharpway Instagram, Sharp, Sharp Way Twitter. Reach out to me. I'm doing a lot of this stuff. Happy to have you in my world. And I'm Edward Hofer with Politipeeps. Please like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Thank you.